Sexual harassment is the worst form of gender-based violence in tertiary education institutions. So when students are violated, they go back to their hostels. If you speak out, you can, your physical security can come under threat. So that way, it's better to keep quiet, experience the violence, and finish in one piece. Some even ask, to, ask you to come to the hostel to sleep with them. I experienced that. There's a growing body of evidence to actually suggest that girls and women are more vulnerable to patterns of abuse, patterns of injustice in any space that they find themselves. An ideal space on a tertiary institution would be one in which whether you're male or female, you can learn, you can live, you can socialize in the environment. You're not living in any kind of fear of discrimination or physical harm. You're also not um, afraid of even coming out to you know, contest for political positions. During my 100 level days, I happen to be the acting governor of my level. I have these huge guys in my class. If there is anything, let's contribute money to do this. We need to contribute money for Maka, for, you know, they'd be like, if you ask me for any money, I will slap you. And that would actually make me talk about this concept of contra power harassment, where female professors are molested or are abused by um, male students. But because people do not come to terms with the power asymmetry in that relationship, there is no much body of research to actually see this as a major problem that we need to talk about or program on. So you know that from the point of a victim or a survivor coming forward to even make a complaint that the protective mechanism, confidentiality and all the necessary framework needs to be put in place. You also want to, to, to be in an environment where if such thing arises, you know that there are people who can stand up for you or speak up for you. I think we don't have many women in Nigerian tertiary institutions because of three fundamental factors. One, around the level of education, two, the career entry and growth of women, and thirdly, the social uh, setting or the structural and hierarchical setting in university leadership. In the last few years, we all were hearing around sexual harassment, around sex for grades in institutions of higher learning, there has to be that remembrance that these institutions are founded ab initio on the principles of justice and equity and they must come back uh, to those foundations. We've had a lot of Nigerian universities coming out with different policies around ethics, equity and justice in their structures. And when we're talking protective framework, it goes beyond policies. Where are the female hostels placed? Where are the male hostels placed? And we are not advocating lowering the standard so that girls will enter. No. We are still talking about merit. Many girls are qualified. I was the only lady in my department for 14 years. Now, we are 50-50. In fact, we are, we are more ladies now than men by, I think, two people. You know, why did it happen? It's when the university had the policy of all first-class graduates should be engaged in the department. And the first-class graduates were girls, so they kept coming by merit. Something the foundation is trying to do, and I hope it succeeds so they can build on it, is having a network of women that work within the space. One of our consultants, I would say, also raised with us the possibility of a ranking system so that there's an annual assessment and ranking of the tertiary institutions in the country along safeguarding pillars and that ranking is put in the public space. So just the way you're looking at jam scores for your kids, to say, oh my kids, I want my child to go to UNN, but also looking at their safeguarding records. When they want to employ new staff, like lecturers, both teaching and non-teaching generally, they should try and be gender balanced. So there's need to actually educate the men on the need to understand that giving women the chance at leadership does not necessarily mean things will go back. I think CSOs can do a lot in influencing how these spaces are more tolerable for women. Helping universities to come together as a community of practice to sign up to some certain principles or tenets to say, as Nigerian universities, this is what we stand for. We stand for gender justice, we stand for gender equity. We will not uh, 
uh, tolerate anything otherwise.